We, you and I, have become our own worst enemies. We have come to believe that failure is fatal. Failure is not an option. I call bullshit on it. Failure is the essence to make a life of purpose. How else would you know you are doing the right thing or the wrong thing if you don't fail? If you don't embrace it, challenge it, and accept it? Fear is in all of us. It grabs us and it takes hold of us. And it makes us not live who we should be. And by becoming our own worst enemies, we also tend to blame others because we will never point that finger at us. We will never ever say it's because of us or because of me that I have not achieved. Where does this fear come from? It comes from old world dogmatic education systems, industrial concepts, industrial revolutions that have not left us. We have been taught to be obedient. We have been taught to be subservient. We have been told you fit in a hierarchy. We have been told to sit down in the box. You see, we are always seeking somebody else's permission. We are always waiting for somebody to tell us it's okay for you to go and do something. It's okay for you to go from consultant to senior consultant. It's okay for you to become the next manager. We are always looking for somebody's permission. Emotion weighs heavier than reality. Our emotions, that fear that grips you, that says you can't do something, the fear that says, but what if I do this and I fail? What would somebody else think of me if I followed my dreams and my passions and my ambitions? Who the hell cares? You should care about you your dreams, your passions, and your ambitions. That's what should happen. The reality is, we all move on with our lives, we all accept each other for who we are, and we become our own worst enemies. Now, just imagine for a moment, give yourself one moment, just imagine who you could be if you said yes to your ambition, if you said yes to your passion, if you only realized the only permission you've ever needed in your entire life to be who you wanted to be was your own permission. I would like to paint the reality for you. I want a picture to stay with you for two days. And I'm going to ask eight people to please come up on stage. Any eight. Seize the moment, people. <laughs> this is your ambition, this is your passion, this is your confidence. Any eight, come up. Before I start picking you out. <laughs> Round of applause, people. Eight people. I want to paint a mental picture for you. It is absolutely important that you understand this picture because at the end of this picture, you are going to decide where you are going to be. Do I have eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. People are even fighting to come up on the stage. Great. Eight. We've got eight people here. Let me tell you about some studies. Gallup Institute. You heard of Gallup Institute? One of the foremost thinkers, researchers, and think tanks on leadership, management, employee engagement. Employee engagement right now in 2016 is at 13%. 13% of us are engaged at work. This is on a study of over 1 million people. I want to paint that picture for you because you are going to decide where in this picture you are. Here's eight people. This is a department. Think about this. This is a department. I'd like you to come and stand here. Okay. 
Ladies and gentlemen, in this department at organization ABC, this is the engaged employee. <laughs> Can I ask you, what the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> guys, we laugh about this. This is the reality. You are seven people in a department of eight who are not engaged, who come to work for coming to work's sake. I want to take the question of employee engagement one level down. What is the business analysis engagement? How many of these people have chosen business analysis? And who and, and which ones has business analysis chosen? Now, this is not Star Wars. This is not the force. The force is not going to choose you, okay? If you haven't chosen business analysis as your career, and you've somehow fallen into it, then you need to ask yourself, why are you doing this? What are you doing? Here's another scary stat. So the reality is seven out of eight people do not work with their strengths or in their desired profession. And I'm telling you today, and I'm challenging you to challenge me, business analysts are not excluded from the stat. Here's the scary bit. Curtis yes. and Opa, <laughs> stand aside. Out of the seven that's already disengaged, two of them didn't even know they had a choice. They didn't know they had a choice to follow their dreams and their passions. You know why they didn't have a choice? Because of dogmatic old world education systems who have told us and have put into our minds, you don't have choices. Look at this picture. Disengaged, one person engaged, pulling the rest of them. You take a moment now and you ask yourself, in what group are you in? Thank you. Are you choosing business analysis? Or is business analysis choosing you? Think about it. Let's take this down from international studies, global studies, to our very own study, Interview. The Interview magazine was born out of the desire to understand the South African market. It's great quoting chaos studies and great quoting US stats and UK stats. Wonderful. But what's happening right here? Let me tell you, on page 20 of the interview magazine, BAs are well understood, 51%. Visible presence, 69%. So we're getting some visibility, but we're not really understood it. We have a respected reputation. Executives think we, 67% of executives think we have a respected reputation. BAs, we only believe we have 58% respected reputation. We don't even respect our own reputations as business analysts. Does this picture that you just saw make sense to you now? Disengaged? Are we really engaged as business analysts? BA Happiness, page 33. Number of business analysts who rated they are highly happy, 43%. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? 43% of you are happy. Why do you come to work? Very high, 13%. That 13% is the same 13% of the engaged employee. If we're not happy, why do it? I have one rule in my team. If you don't care, don't do it. Because it's not the skill that gets you through. It's your attitude. So, who are we blaming? Because we're definitely blaming somebody. We're definitely not blaming ourselves. We're blaming our managers. Job descriptions. Number of BAs who have job descriptions. 48 49% have job descriptions. Oh, I don't have a job description. I don't know what to do. Nobody told me what to do. I can't be happy. Bullshit. How many of you have KPIs? Only 49% of you. Oh, I don't know how to get, I don't know how to manage and measure myself. Only 40% have a career plan. Why are you waiting for somebody else to give you a career plan? Take control of your own career. You don't need somebody else to give you your KPIs 
and to put you in a box and tell you what to do. Just imagine who you could be if you just followed your ambition, if you'd only understood the only permission you ever needed was your own. How's that for the reality? So if that's the reality, then by golly, it's time to challenge the status quo. And there's no better time to do that than at this conference. If you do not leave this conference feeling restless, uneasy, difficult, then this conference has failed. And there are only two points of failure. One, this conference didn't do a good enough job of empowering you, invigorating you, rejuvenating you, or you are one of those two people who didn't know you had a choice. So I definitely want to challenge the status quo. Because I believe, and again, this is my opinion, there are still a number of sort of low-hanging issues that is still plaguing our profession. Why are we not well understood? Why are we not respected? Because there's these little things that are still plaguing us. Number one, cell limitation. Last year, I spoke about think like an analyst, act like a consultant. And one of the topics I spoke about was self-limitation. I want to talk to you today about cell limitation. We have just not done our profession any favors by the way we act and get perceived. How and what we do is essentially how we sell ourselves. And we are not doing a good job of selling. And we cannot do a good job of selling because we are not connected and understanding our greater purpose as business analysts. If we do that, it's very easy to sell. Ask any organization who brands themselves and takes a product to market. What's the number one thing you want to have? A customer value proposition. It needs to be crisp and clear. When you have a customer value proposition that's crisp and clear, it's so easy to sell. I do that. I have to sell every single day. We have to become better at selling ourselves. That's what we need to do. Number one thing that's plaguing our profession. In interview 2015, Ian Mann, one of the foremost strategists and thinkers in our country, his comment on business analysts were, BAs are the CEO's army. Really? Are your CEOs looking out for you? Are they coming to you? Are they asking you, please join me at my round table? Help me make decisions? Are they seeking you out? No, they're not. We need to start moving people. We need to start moving from eating the low-hanging fruits. We're getting drunk on the low-hanging fruits. But it's not taking us anywhere. We're feeling good. We think we're good, but we're not. And that's what the whole purpose of interview, the whole purpose of this conference, the whole purpose of getting together and taking a, a, a status check. We need to start moving from task to purpose. We need to start moving from tools to service. And we need to start, most importantly, from accepting to challenging. Challenge with respect. Challenge because you want to make a difference. Are you guys ready to shift? Oh my goodness. Are you guys ready to shift? Do you want to shift? Great. There's always that one. Good. I'm glad. Because it's time to become a trade of distinction. It's not about the skills. It's not about the tools. It's not about the methodology. It's not about the way you do things. It's about leaving a distinction, a distinctive mark on the work that you do. And only you can do that. We need to move away from the low-hanging fruits to becoming a wow profession. We need to become the people, the go-to people. When organizations want to make big decisions, they need to go, where's my team of BAs? That's what should be happening. So we need to take stock of what we value in this career. Because what we value is what we project. What we and you and I value is what we project. So what's the difference between having a job and having ambition? I understand we have lives, we have families, we have kids, we have things outside of work. We have hobbies. 
and work, we shouldn't live to work. You know, we should work to live. I get that. I understand that. I believe in work-life balance. You can ask my graduates. They're currently working. <laughs> Jobs are important. We spent five out of seven days at an office with colleagues. We didn't even spend that much time with our spouses. Why on earth would you do it doing something that you're not passionate about, you're not ambitious about, you don't want to make more of? I certainly don't want that. I don't want that for you. So, what's the difference between having a job and having ambition? Jobs get defined. They get defined in HR. They get given to a manager, gets given to a manager, gets given to a manager, gets given to you. It has specs, and it has KPIs, and it tells you where you can sit, and what you can do, and how many phone calls you can make, and when you can set the internet. Jobs get defined. They have descriptions. Then they get put onto you, and you feel great because somebody gave you permission to have that job. The problem is the job starts to define us. After a number of years, we become the job. I'm going to test all of you later. There's going to be a lovely little exercise, and I'll bet you, you all, when I ask you, what do you do, you're going to tell me you're a BA. I know that. We all know that. But who are you? Think about it. Jobs have become to define us. And the BA role, for far too long, has become too task oriented too process oriented too methods oriented and we're not focusing on the essence of what it is to shift organizations, to take organizations on journeys, to create and implement change for a better tomorrow. That's what we should be. Ambitious, bold, passionate, living our passions and our strengths every day, taking our stakeholders and the people that we work with on a journey. But jobs don't give you that. Jobs tell you what to do and when to do it. When you have ambition, ambition has no definition. You can't define it. There's no course for it. There's no university degree. You can't write a job spec for ambition. You get to decide. You make the decisions. There's no permission for ambition. Now, don't get me wrong. Ambitious people have jobs. I believe I'm an ambitious person. I have a job. I have a defined job. I have KPIs. I have to meet targets. But let me tell you something. The job doesn't define me. I define the job. Ambition defines the job. Ambition defines how you're going to do it, when you're going to do it, with who you're going to do it, as long as you're making sure you're achieving your outcomes. Let ambition drive your job. Don't let your job drive you. Okay, let me ask you a question. Who here are managers? BA managers, IT managers? I'll leave the project managers. <laughs> Who here? Are, I know there are BA managers in the room. I can't see. Uh, we've got hands up? We've got hands up? Cool. Um, how many uh, line managers or lineies or employees do you have? Three. Cool. So you've got three employees sort of reporting into you. So there was somebody over there? Yeah? Yeah, you? Six. six. So you manage six people. Okay. There were some hands here. Who are more BA managers? Yeah? Eighteen. Sure. Rolling with the big dogs. <laughs> okay. So we've got a couple of BA managers, and they all have employees and line managers and lineies, all of them. Okay. How many leaders do we have in the room? Brilliant. Excellent. You are taking your ambition. When I asked that question to a group of people a while back, the first answer was, but nobody said I could be a leader. Leadership is not given. Leadership is earned. Leaders have followers, and I'm not downplaying managers. We, are, we need to have hierarchy. We understand that's the kind of world we live in. But we need to understand the difference between managers and employees and leaders and followers. This organization, this conference, this group of people should, this 300 people sitting here, should be the leaders of our profession. 
We should have all put our hands up. Next year, we're all going to put our hands up because you've chosen to come to this conference. You have chosen to be part of this organization. You have chosen to be part of this profession. And we need to be that one individual standing here leading the rest of the organization and the people, getting them onto the leadership side. We all need leaders. We need people to lead this organization and this profession. So what's the loose definition of ambition? The strongest desire to achieve something. That's all it is. The strongest desire to achieve something, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be career. It can be a hobby. It can be a personal mission. All it is, the strongest desire to achieve something. So let me ask you, Please share your opinions. What does ambition look like? Who is ambition to you? Anything. Somebody said something here? Olympians. Olympians. Awesome. Great example. What else does ambition look like? Anybody want to share their thoughts? No boundaries. Okay. Any other ideas? What does the media usually push in our face? Money. CEOs, sports stars. That's what we've been told what ambition should look like. Rich, wealthy, private jets, captains of industry. That's what we've been told what ambition is. And it's those people that also tell us we have to stay in the box. Yeah? yeah. Can I tell you what ambition looks like? I'd like every single speaker to stand up. If you're a speaker at this conference, stand up. This is ambition. This is passion. Please give them a round of applause. Who are, who are first-time speakers? Remain standing. First-time speakers. I can't see you. have got one, two, three, four, five, six. First-time speakers? Please, a bigger round of applause. Right here, right here, in our own community, sitting right next to you, is what ambition looks like. They had the strongest desire to achieve something. They gave up weekends, nights, days, to put together, for your benefit, a 50-minute presentation. Let's, let's appreciate that. That's ambition, the strongest desire to get up and make a difference. Share their story for your benefit. We have ambition right here in the room. We do not need Silicon Valley. We do not need any of that. We have passion and ambition and strength right here. And we need to become aware and acknowledge that. But for far too long, for far too long, ambition was almost sort of a dirty word. It's for those that are greedy, Power hungry. The guys in slick suits. Ryan? <laughs> you know, again, who's telling us this? We get taught that ambition is not for us. You stay in your box, keep and make sure that that pyramid and that hierarchy is kept intact. But ambition done for the right reasons. Ambition that grows communities, grows individuals, is more than just yourself, that's the ambition we need to achieve for. That's the ambition we need to aim for. That's the ambition you need to bring to yourself, your passion, your careers, and this community. And you have to protect it. Because at every corner, somebody is going to pull you down. And before that corner, it's going to be you. So I want to share with you, I want to break this down. I want to break ambition down for you into bite-sized, logical, let's bring it down from 50,000 foot so that you can actually make something of it. What does it mean? And for me, it's four things. I've, I've taken the time and I've read lots of things and I've engaged lots of people and I've networked with lots of people. And for me, these four things is what ambition is and what ambition will give you. Focus, clarity, consistency, and creativity. That is what ambition can give you. 
that's what we need to make our careers and our professions in business analysis incredibly successful. If we look at those four things, it's exactly that that's plaguing our profession. That's exactly what I'm saying is the things that we need to fix in our profession. Saratoga is one of the leading employers of business analysts in Cape Town. And I do a lot of interviewing. I meet a lot of business analysts. And when I ask them, what do you do? They split focus. They are doing jack of all, master of none. They are struggling to identify what they should be focusing on. There's no right or wrong answer. But just f attached to that is the lack of consistency. There's no consistency in the way we do things, how we do things. How on earth are we going to become respected experts in what we do if we don't have consistency and we don't have focus? Right? They say to become an expert, you need 10,000 hours at anything. 10,000 hours. For CBAP, you only need seven and a half, so you're actually not even an expert yet. <laughs> we lack focus. We're not having the consistency in how we are doing things. When I ask BAs, when they come for interviews, define, firstly, what it is you do, and then define just generally to have an open conversation about what business analysis is. The lack of clarity on the definition of business analysis is alarming. How on earth are we going to become ambitious, respected, well understood if that clarity is not there? You ask any ambitious person who have achieved greatness in whatever it is they do, you ask them if they follow the plan from A to Z. And the answer will be no. Why? Because no plan gets you from A to B. An enormous amount of creativity is required to achieve your goals and your ambition. How many of us are allowed to bring creativity into our roles, into our jobs? Are we really allowed to? So, this is what ambition is. Focus, laser focus. Let us as a community stand together and decide what we are going to focus on. We have great tools. We have the IIBA, we have the BA BAC, we have this community, we have thought leaders. But let us pool our talents and become focused as a community. Let us not lose focus. What should we be doing? What focus does is it also allows you to say no. When that next project comes along and says, well, we need somebody to just gap fill this. Okay, yeah, there's like a BA, you can just like do it. That's not my role. This is what I do. I'm a focused, aspirational individual who can make the following difference. This is my focus. We need to call it. Clarity. Let us be clear on who and what we do and how we do it and for who we do it as business analysts and as a community so that we can grow our profession, we can become respected. And let us, for goodness sake, adopt and bring in creativity. Nowhere does it say we can't be creative. Nowhere does it say that creativity is not allowed. We need to bring creativity back into our profession. So ambition is not a solitary thing. We do not work for ourselves. We do not serve ourselves. We serve and work for each other. And your biggest commodity, your most valuable commodity of the 21st century is your network. Look at what all the tech giants have done. All they've done is connect the network. And they've made it easy. And they are sitting on a yacht while we are sitting here. Your most valuable commodity is your network. We do not need tools for a network. This is the tool, the BA conference. This is it. We need to connect. We need to share. We need to shape with each other. As humans, we have a desperate desire to belong, to be part of something. It's human nature. And especially where it is like-minded individuals, like you. 
Now, what is a network? Is, you can look at it in many different ways. A network is just a community of like-minded individuals. But what does it do for you? What does it do for your ambition? It gives you a platform. We stand on the shoulders of giants. That's how we grow. There are giants in this room. Can you see them? Can you connect into them? As the giants and the leaders in this organization and in this community, we need to understand that we are the platform. This network is the platform for which this profession will grow and become a respected profession in the future. Take a moment and just look around. How many of you have taken a moment and actually breathed in this conference? Just looked at who is here. Who could be here? Your next opportunity, your next deal, your next job, your next revolution could be sitting in this room for the next two days. And I've taken it upon myself to tell you and to remind you to open your eyes and look at your network. The passion, the ambition, the leadership is here. The question is, can you see it? I want to share a real story with you of what a network can do. The value of, business, of BASA, Business Analysis Summit 2015, to Saratoga and me. For showing up for two days, all I had to do was do a 15-minute presentation, show up and network, and be part of the community. I closed 4.7 million rands worth of business. I gained one new customer. I was personally invited to do three corporate presentations of the presentation I did at BASA. Two people asked me to be their mentors, which has been the most phenomenal experience to share with somebody else and see them grow. One non-executive board membership, one keynote address, and two international conferences. For showing up for two days. That's what my network means to me. Hand on heart, I did not go there to sell. I go because I genuinely believe in this community. I absolutely enjoy connecting and understanding who you are. And more importantly, I want to share what I have with you so that you can go off and do your ambition and follow your passions. The question is, what does BA Summer 2016 mean for you? You've got your ambition. You have the perfect opportunity to connect at this conference, but you have to understand two concepts, identity and community. Let's, let's talk about that. Identity. Essentially, identity is your badge of honor. It's what you wear on your sleeve. It's what we see and you perhaps don't. And identity is a complex thing. There are very clever people that study identity and identity issues and the complexity of identity. Be comfortable with who you are. Accept you for you. I have come to accept me for me. I know who I am and who I am not what I can do for you and what I can't do for you, what I'm looking from you or for you and what you can give me. I have come to accept that. I want you to understand the concept of identity. Make sure you are comfortable with your identity. Without authenticity, without you sharing your identity, networking and connecting into you is virtually impossible. Authenticity is rare, but it is absolutely fundamental to connecting into a network. Please become aware of who you are and perhaps of who you want to be because of who you want to be is people sitting in this room that can perhaps help you on that journey. Become critically aware of what you project. Take stock of who you are. Once you have your identity, you can connect into a community. And what is a community? A community is just a collection of like-minded individuals who, have, who share similar interests or passions and share similar identities. 
That's all a community is. But the best communities, the best communities are the ones that understand that they serve a purpose. The best communities understand that they are nothing more than a platform for every single one of us to stand up on and follow our dreams and passions. Successful communities have more givers than takers. The number of times I've come to the BA conferences where people sit and take copious amounts of notes and don't engage is a really sad sight for me because you're missing the essence. It's not about taking the notes. That's why we live in a digital age. You can download it. Connect with people. Connect into the community. Share your passions and your ambitions. We can only grow if we talk and share and connect. The best communities solve real-world problems. Are we not employed to solve real-world problems? Yeah, absolutely we are. We work with our communities and our organizations every single day to solve their real-world problems. Why can't we do that as a community? And the best communities survive way past the event date. And I can only leave that in your hands. Will BA Summer 2016 last beyond September 15th? I don't know. Only you can answer that. So once you have your identity and you have your community, bring your passion, bring your ambition, share and connect. It's what is going to fuel you. Essentially, your network, your community is fuel for your ambition. We fuel each other. We feed off each other. We support and we grow each other. So let me ask you, what's going to be different on the 15th of September? You have two days, people. Two days. This is a gift. This conference is your gift for you to shift. We have come to the summit as individuals, and it is critical we leave as a community, focused, with clarity, consistent in how we do things and how we understand things, and let's do it with creativity. We need to leave this two days stronger, better, and more connected. So what's going to happen on Thursday morning? You fly back out, you get back to your office, You've got an overflowing inbox, you have ops, something's not gone live, somebody's sick, you have to do stuff, and just like that it's gone. Or, are you going to shift? Are you going to shift? Yeah. Yes, we're going to shift. We're going to shift as a community. I have to keep practicing shift, make sure I say it right. We have to become explicit about that decision if you want it to happen. Intentions don't deliver anything. Commitment does. We need to commit to making the shift to living a life of purpose and ambition. And we have two days in which to practice this and to get it right and to fuel ourselves and to refuel ourselves and to re-energize ourselves. So let me ask, who here has already got the job of writing the post-conference write-up? <laughs> Who's that sad person? <laughs> Shame. Okay. So you're going to have to come to the conference, go to as many tracks, make as many notes, write up something, put something on your blog. It's really cool to see these sketch notes. I really like these sketch notes things. That's really the creativity. Creativity, right? Sketch notes, awesome. But I want to ask you, to do one more thing. Over and above taking the what you have learned, take a who. Take a who with you. This is not Dr. Seuss, who in the zoo. Who. <laughs> right? Who are you going to connect with and who are you going to take back with you? Make the concerted effort to take a who with you. Because you just don't know when that person is going to fuel your ambition and your passion. You just don't know when that one conversation is going to come in handy. You're not going to get the conversations and the presentations, people. 
So think about it. Make a mental commitment today. You have two days to practice this. Connect, share, put your badge of honor out, and take somebody with you. Don't take somebody with you home, unless you want to. <laughs> but don't go, go home and say, geez, this thing turned out into be a whole orgy thing. And, right? But who are you going to take home with you? I've taken many people along my journey of five years at being at this conference. Every year, I've picked up individuals who have helped me in my life and in my passions and in my journeys more than any other way. I know that I have genuinely and sincerely helped people on their careers and in their lives. Who are you going to do that for? So you guys said you're ready to shift, right? Right here? Right now? Oh yes. We're going to do it right here, right now. I know that networking is very scary. I know that talking to strangers is a scary thing. For me too. But I practice. And, I, and I've gotten down to the essence of what it is. And I would like to give you a practical skill. Something to help you network better over the next two days. Would you like that? Yes. yes because we're going to connect. Because what I don't want is when you see me walking across to you, to go, oh God, he's coming, oh God, he's coming, <laughs> shit, he's here, oh hello, yes, hello. Or when I see you, and you start looking at me, and you're like, uh, hello, hello. <laughs> Come on, I want to know who you are. I want to get to know you. I want to know what, who you are, what do you do, what can you do for me, what can I do for you, what can I help you with. What can I share with you? It takes one conversation to spark. Let me share with you another real story. The very first BA Summit, Joe Newbert and I met. We skipped a session, and we sat in the lobby, and we said, we're going to do something different. Joe and I have done incredible things together, but it's because I chose to connect with somebody. Many of you may or may not know mine and Joe's story, but we've done some great stuff together, and it's because I chose to connect with him, and he chose to connect with me. Who is your person that you're going to connect with to do great things? So I'm going to ask you to think about some things, and I'm going to give you some, some, some skills to do it, and then I'm going to give you this stage. Because for only one time in this conference, you're going to have an opportunity to have the entire attention of this audience. Okay? I've got prizes for you. So before we get to those brave moments, let's go through some skills. You and me. Who are you? What do you do? Who do you do it for? What do they want? And how can you transform them? That's you. Think about that, okay? Take two minutes and think about who are you, please? I know you're a business analyst. Good grief. You probably work at NetBank. I know that. <laughs> Who do you do it for? Yes, I know there's a stakeholder. whoop de doo But who are you? I'm, I'm asking you to, to chip away at those, those layers in front of you. Chip away. Who are you? What do you? Who do you do it for? I'll give you an example. Me. What can I do for you? My top five biggest strengths, significance, maximize, activate, intellection, and focus. That's who I am. I have come to understand that that is who I am. I don't do anything unless it makes a significant difference in mine and your life. I can take any situation and maximize it. If you are struggling to get something off of the ground, I can help you maximize that moment. It's just how my brain works. If you are struggling to get a new concept, or you, you're struggling with an idea in your mind, you don't know how to activate that idea, I can help you with that. Because that's a strength of mine. I'm an activator. You want to think about some things? You want to bounce ideas? My fourth biggest strength is intellection. Intellectual capability. To think, help you think through things. You're struggling with focus? That's my fifth biggest strength. That's who I am. It's taken me years to accept who I am. Ever since I've understood who I am, 
my five biggest strengths, and I've embraced that, I've become a better person, not only for me, but for the people around me. So take a moment to think about who you are. When you go and network with somebody, or when I come and network with you, what should you do? Be nice. <laughs> Be present. Okay? Validate me. Validate that I have taken the courage to come and talk to you. Do you know how much courage it takes for people to walk up to strangers and talk to them? It takes an enormous amount of courage. Value them. They have taken the time to come and say hello to you. Value them. Compliment them. The power of a compliment can set you on a journey that you never knew you could take. Be nice. Compliment somebody. And, and, and try and figure out ways of how you're going to remember that person. An incredible experience is you meet somebody down the line, six months down the line, a year down the line, maybe at the next conference, and you remember me. And you say, Mohammed, how was your son's 10th birthday? <laughs> Which is on Thursday the 15th. That's what I know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's an incredible feeling to be validated, to be seen, to be acknowledged. Okay? This is what it takes to network. Understand who you are, and when somebody comes to talk to you, in a nutshell, just be nice. But if you really want to connect, have presence. Make eye contact. Be clear. Have credibility. And be genuine. When you and me connect, let us be true in that connection. Let us value that moment. Let us understand that at that moment, something great can happen. You just don't know. So every interaction is a golden moment. Let's make the intention and the commitment to treat this conference for the next two days as a gift. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to shift? Okay. Yeah. So, who is going to come up on stage and tell us why you are awesome? I've got a, somebody right here. Round of applause, people. Round of applause. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Please, oh, tell us. Oh, really? Very bright. <laughs> it is. This is your okay. spotlight moment. Okay. First of all, I've done my FTI course as a business analyst uh, with Steve Erlong and those people. Um, and that was, to me, a wow moment. Okay? And I've been a business analyst now for many years. For me, the passion that I now have, I'm a very creative person that comes naturally for me. And what I see daily is working with fellow BAs, but on a competency level. The same thing that you spoke about, Mohammed, is like giving them that extra boost, that extra hand that they need in order to go further, but within the company that I'm working with. So I'm also looking at people that I can network with that can help me to establish that, that can help me to take my hand and to look at our BAs that we've got in our company and take them forward, make them more competent, more give them that, that confidence that they need Absolutely. so that they can go and sell themselves but also have that amazing confidence within themselves to do things without thinking about it. You need to be a business analyst. It should come naturally. You shouldn't think of the next thing that you do. It's just something that will just be natural. And to you, the other thing that, that's very important to me is, like you said, um, is you need to go to work 
but it shouldn't be a work. It should be a passion. If you do something that you're passionate about, you will never work. That, that will never be your work. And that's why I'm taking this BA Summit. It's my first one, and I'm already very wowed about it. Um, <laughs> so I'm taking this, and I, what I want to take from it is to be that BA competency lead. And to actually, leader. Yeah, that, Absolutely. that leader, a yes. BA competency leader, and to help our people to become the best that they can possibly be. Marilise, <laughs> that is how you do it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Marilise, who is going to help her on her journey and help her take her team to become leaders with confidence? You know who Marilise is now. Make the connection. Marilise, this is for you, for your bravery. Oops. <laughs> Thank you. I have one more prize, people. I have one more prize. The stage is yours. Yes, we've got somebody over here. Come up. Uh, uh, just before I start with who I am, I was laughing when you said uh, you choose business analysis that doesn't choose you. For me, it's the opposite, actually. It chose me, but I love it. Great. <laughs> The force is strong in you. Yes, it's strong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I am passionate about creating things. I love to create. I want Tell to them. see what I've created. And it gives me great joy when somebody uses whatever um, system that I've created. I'm an ent entrepreneur. I'm a mother. I'm a wife. And I love to give uh, positive advice to people. And I love to turn negative situations into a positive situation. So I love to influence change in people. I am a strategic thinker. And who do I do it for? My team at work, um, my family, my clients that enjoy my cooking. And let's see what else. Thank you. <laughs> that was a brave moment. Thank you very much. And this is for you for your bravery. Ladies and gentlemen, you now know of two more people you may not have known about who may fuel you or you can fuel them. So, let me ask you for one last time. Are you ready to shift? Yes. Are you ready to make this the best damn BA conference we've ever been to? Yes. Come on, people. Let's get a hell yes. Oh, yes. This is going to be the best BA conference we've been to. I look forward to meeting you, connecting with you, and learning about you. I am here if you need me, and I look forward to meeting you.